Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Its five-year mission, to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hi guys, welcome to my channel again. Um, I'm making an instructional video this time um, at the request of a friend of mine. He was suggesting that th in the last video um, I didn't say anything and he suggested that I do um, some kind of instruction um, because a lot of people have been playing on the ages and a lot of people are uh, who are trying the Enterprise are struggling with it. So I thought I would um, show you what I do and hopefully um, that will give you a hand. And if you do have any questions please feel free to uh, leave a comment or contact me directly either through Uplay in the game <coughs> under Captain Slog Captain underscore, underscore Slog or uh, on Steam. Anyway, here we are. Back at the beginning again, which I'm sure you're all familiar with by now. So, we'll just do a private match, just in case. And then we'll click on Start, test the mic, and then we go. Okay. There she is. Chins is just going out and cataloging anomalies and you get a random determination of when you bump into Klingons or if something will show up and try to blow you up. Um, but I think it's still random enough that... Uh, uh, anyway, let me just start the whole damn thing. So if you are in Steam... There we go. We're continuing our research of the trench. Currently, we're gathering data on several anomalies in the area. I have updated the star charts with new coordinates. Alright, let's, let's reset the bridge chair. I find, first of all, that they don't center it just right. So what I have to do is I have to look up in order to get some height on the visor. I don't know if that's what you guys do or not, but I try to put my knees where the knees go. Anyway, I find the same for, for the other bridge, and that the, the controls are a little bit too low on the other bridge, and they are on this one as well. Hey! Alright, so, once you're centered, it can begin. Now, on the Aegis, you've got all your hollow displays. Okay, no, that's not going to work. Gotta move you back here. Alright. So you got all your hit hollow displays on the Aegis here. Not so on Classic Trek. Classic Trek is analog. And all we have are our uh, gumdrop, jujubes, or whatever you want to call them. Now, when you look at the ship, it looks daunting. How the hell are you supposed to know what to do? But as with the Aegis, you've got the overlay. So you right click on the left controller and the help overlay comes up. There you go. That's how you learn your controls. Fairly basic. So, first thing you want to do is not only familiarize yourself with the controls, but that will come in time. You grab the um, clipboard, and that is pretty much, well, not pretty much, but it's very similar to the display ahead of you. So you grab the clipboard, and of course in the beginning you're surrounded by anomalies apparently. Local map will show that that map ahead of you. Objects objectives is like clicking the innermost button on the Aegis. C 
click on the actual um, objective and it gives you your subclasses, what you, what you need to do here. Pressing the green button will go back. You can use the bottom buttons to cycle through targets if you want, or you can just poke them on the view screen, which will work also. So, if you do this, get rid let's, let's get rid of the overlay because I find it annoying. So, you target something. Okay, we don't want to. Let's not hit that rock. Right, so let's scan that anomaly. And over here you can actually see the scan progressing. These are your display screens right there. That's the three of them. When something happens, it usually comes up here. So if you tell her to raise raise shields, it puts us at risk of damage. You see that it shows up. Over here is the information that you gather from whatever it is you scan, be it a uh, enemy ship or what have you. And over here, of course, is the readouts, whether the shields are up or whether uh, it's scanning. Also, it shows you when uh, you've got your weapons armed and you've got a target, it will tell you when the um, bits and pieces are ready. But that's from the captain's perspective. Now, we'll just bring that back again. Now, to bring up that screen, I don't know if you guys use that on the Aegis. I don't know if you've used, uh, if you play the Solar Mission, but Solar Mission, you click up on the right-hand touchpad. Right. Um, using the overlay again, you can see that we have red alert. And as a single player, they do it automatically. That's one of the good things about bots. And I'm rather looking forward to this new voice um, integration that they're um, going to be bringing out for it. So you can give them voice commands instead of having to bring this up all the time and telling them to aye, aye, disarm torpedoes. torpedoes. That kind of thing. Alright, so I said that there's readouts up there and I believe it's actually different per station. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to the station. So if you want to take somebody else's position, you just look at them and then you click the take over and here you are. So yeah, it does look like it's the same information and I guess it would be because that would be the shields down. Um, again, here you have the overlay. So you've got your phaser range, your target, etc., your scanner range. You've got your arming torpedoes. Now this is a little bit different. Actually, it's a lot different than the Aegis. Because with the Aegis, you've got the arm disarm torpedoes as a toggle and what have you. Um, on this, you have to analog go through choosing of targets using these buttons. And on some, whenever you're choosing a destination, which I'll show you later, you actually have to click an accept button other than just poking it. Anyway, as you can see, we now have the cloud targeted. From here, we can click the scan button. Oh, okay, maybe not that target. Will you scan that one? No, you won't. Will you scan that one? No, you won't. Okay, so we have to move on to the next area. But here we have our fire phasers torpedoes when they're ready. If we arm the torpedoes, you'll stay blink until they're ready. That's the only indication. You don't have a progress bar or anything. It's just blinky lights, which is retro. Welcome to the Enterprise. Shields, red light, shows the shields are on, shields are off. When you have fire uh, phasers, normally there's a uh, display. Up here, you will find no target selected. See, so easy to forget. No valid target. No target. Phasers, there we go. Invalid target. It shows you the um, charge of the phasers. Instead of on your panel, you got to look up at the readouts, which I guess makes sense because, well, that's probably what they had on the bridge. I also want to point out that this bridge is fairly accurate in scale as well. Um, when you play games like Star Trek Online and things of that nature, people tend to oversize the bridge so that they can walk around. But in this, I find that they've actually done a fairly decent job of it. 
Yeah. Looks good. Anyway. Back we go. So, to go back to your station, you just click the right thumb pad. And back you go. Next station, let's look at engine. Uh, well... Yeah, let's look at engineering. Why the hell not? Okay, engineering. A few more buttons. A bit more complex. But, essentially, it's, as a, a friend of mine pointed out, WASD. W-A-S-D. Up, down, left, right. Simple controls. Next destination previous. So here is what I was talking about earlier. When you bring up the warp map, let's say we want to go to Ryburn, we will just choose next destination, or you can go backwards and skip back directly to it. So it, it kind of rotates through. So it goes dee 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 and then comes back and starts again. Anyway, so we'll choose that by setting the destination. Now it's locked in, and you can see that we now have our heading and our rotation. So, like the other ship, we have to rotate and get to it. Unlike the other ship, we don't have the um, corridor. So, we just have to manually turn until we're pointed in that direction, and this is our only means of telling. So, you'll find yourself looking down here quite a lot. And there it is. So, here we go. Right, so now that we're aligned, all we have to do is punch the switch, which is up there. You just have to remember where it is. <laughs> That's the trick. All right, now, unlike the Aegis, we've got a toggle of forward and reverse. You can't just sort of like put the speed up and down. It has to increase the speed. Now, here's the trick. When you go forward, increasing the speed and decreasing the speed obviously goes back and forth. Forward decreasing the speed will not bring you backwards. It, it drops you right down to zero. You can't go any slower than slow. This is the current speed overlay. So when you actually start imp adding speed, it will display on these jelly beans, or whatever you want to call them, gumdrops. Full stop takes it all down. Speed, as you can see, that I've been looking at every now and again is up here, and it tells you whether you're going forward or reverse. When you click reverse, oops, let's click reverse, okay. So here's the dif difference. Likely, what you would think, well, logic would detect that in reverse, if you decrease the speed, you're going backwards. Not so. Now that we're in reverse gear, increasing the speed will take us in reverse, and decreasing the speed will bring us up to zero again, or bring us forward. So, keep that in mind. Forward is increased speed forward, and reverse is increased speed in reverse. Bit confusing, but there it is. That's analog for you. Kind of like driving a car. Right, so we've covered full stop, move up and down. As you can see, moves the ship up and down. And turns. Right, now previous destinations and um, next destinations only work whenever you've got the maps. So if you wanted to go to, say, SR5496 instead, you'd choose Juro Orbit and then it's the same thing. There you are. So we just do the exact same thing again and bring us around. Let's give us a little speed here so we can play chicken with some of these asteroids. Let's bring us up to about half speed. There we go. Okay, so now we're aligned and we can now pulverize ourselves by trying to warp through a frickin' asteroid. Now, this is one of the cool things about this. Those of you who, who love the old Trek and love the Constitution, this is what it's all about. Right here. Watching this puppy do its tricks. When you're in a dogfight, whatever, that's the trick, or the ticket right there. It's gorgeous. Unfortunately, you don't have many different displays and you can't go underneath it, but here we are looking at the Enterprise from the outside. Alternatively, 
you have the exterior view from the captain's chair, which I will show you at last. But for now, um, yeah, it's uh, a geek dream come true. Now let's just get above the rock. I don't like to, to warp into rocks. I, f I find that it breaks suspension of belief. So let's just get through here. Besides, it's fun navigating your way out of the asteroids anyway. And, listen to that. The initial dampener is going to need recalibration soon. Okay, not her, but that. You can hear the bridge. It, you're on the bridge. This is what we've been waiting for. Those of you who absolutely adore this ship. Right, anyway, let's move back. Don't think I can go any further up. Yeah, I've reached my ceiling. Here, okay, on the Aegis, there is a ceiling limit of 60. So you've, your Z positive is up and Z minus is down. So Z minus 60 and Z positive 60 is, is the limit that you can reach on the up and down. This it, It's the same here, it's just that it doesn't display it. There is no Z modifiers whatsoever. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, We've got covered hell messages uh, and impulse, and we're looking in that direction. And let's punch it. Oops. And we'll look on the outside. And there she is. Flying as she is meant to. There it is. That's the ticket. Now the other view screen is almost 3D, and as you can see, this is retro track, so everything is all 2D. Now I'm going to go back to the captain's chair. Let's get rid of that, and let's pop back for now. Okay, here we go. Now in the captain's chair, we've got bring up the overlay. When a hail comes in, obviously click the accept hail comes up on the display. It's like the the uh, third button on the um, Aegis control. This would be the fourth button, right? Alert that everybody accidentally punches at one point or another. But here we have the impulse map and the warp map. So like um, Helm, you will have these buttons as the captain only in single player. As a matter of fact, the only thing that you have in multiplayer is your clipboard, your red alert, and your accept hail and the views. Those are the only things you have. You don't get to go into Impulse Map, Warp Map, or any of these. Um, because that's the job of the helm. As it is in, in most ships. So it's very similar to the Aegis again. So let's bring up the exterior view so that, like on the Aegis, you can see. And let's ah, come to a full stop so we don't bash into those pillars. Right, so that's our exterior view. Then we've got, once we have a target, we can magnify the target, so let's get ourselves a target here. Okay, and let's... Well, we can't scan the target, that's unfortunate. Now, here's the difference. This is something I should bring to your attention, is the fact that when you're looking at different sections, they bring up their options. And depending on what they're doing at the time, they have different options. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, or if you've played it or not, but I'm going to cover it anyway. When you look in the center, you have ship commands, and that's where you prepare for warp, prepare for in, uh, impulse, and engage target. Now you can tell them to uh, this. You can tell approach the target, and you can tell her to um, bring weapons and fire phasers and so forth manually. But overall, these are the ship commands, and you can use them to engage the target, and that will automatically set them in motion, and they will do what they, they can. Analyze the target, she will scan, and figure out what you need to do. Transport is the only command that we have to transport in single player. This is where it is. You've got to look in the center screen to do it. Right. Okay, now, now that we have a target, magnify the screen, and there's the old trek. On screen. And there she is. As a matter of fact, we've played a bit and have, have done this, and we find it quite effective because 
unless you've got an asteroid field like you have in practically every frickin' system that we go to. The Ensign will be able to pilot using the main map here, if it's open space. And sometimes he'll even attempt it if it's not. I've, I, I know a pilot who likes to crush into big things that are in the way, and he's probably watching the video right now and he knows who he is. <laughs> but if you're not that crazy, you can still manage it. Even if you're that crazy. Right, so take off magnifying, and then we have a target view. All right, so this one um, y it tends okay go away. It, this one it tends to keep the camera. So if if the target is over here and the camera's here and the ship's here, right? If the target moves, the camera will track the target. Now um, I don't know if I can do this. Let's let's get into here. Yeah, okay, it stays. So as we turn around, you see the ship is the thing that turns on the screen, keeping the target in the center. That's actually a good tactical display. Um, well, for those of you who like the top-down appeal, I do not. I like the first-person shooter appeal. I like to be on the bridge instead of watching my puppet ship. But that's just me, to each their own. So I think that's everything on the cover on the captain's side covered. Pulse map, port map, except hail clipboard. Yep, all set. <laughs> Now, let's go to engineering, and I saved this one to last for a reason, because it's freaking complicated. Here we go. Right, you look at this, and all of a sudden your sphincter tightens. And you're like, oh my god, what am I going to do? Of course, you could start pressing buttons just for the fun of it, and I would too, but anyway. Let's bring up the help overlay. Here we go. It's not so bad. You just have to remember what's at what station. First things first. We've got our readouts up here. And this is important to the engineering and also to the captain if you can see it from here. If your resolution is good enough, you can see how much power is being distributed to each of the systems. Um, transport is a focus, a main focus of engineering. And I also like to do this on the Aegis as well. I like engineering to take the transporter controls and I like uh, tactical to take the um, dis disable uh, once they scan it. I mean it just stands to reason. It's logical as my Vulcan brethren would say. I however I'm not a completely logical Vulcan. Anyway, so here we go. We can charge the warp coils, cancel the charge, prepare warp. Let's see. It's not going to happen because we don't have anything set. So let's go set something first, shall we? Alright, so let's just say actually, let's do it ourselves and let's go to Rayburn. Now that she's set, let's go back to engineering. And here we go. So, we can charge warp coils, and we see the warp, warp signature increasing. And it looks like a original Trek display. Fantastic. Charged. Of course you can cancel it as well. Now, I don't know what prepare warp does. I haven't used that yet because I haven't done engineering as much as I've done the other stations. but. Subsystems. Here's when you're looking at your engines and setting up your repair crew. You don't have a repair crew distribution, even distribution. You got to do it yourself. So you manually go through each of the sections, and the jujubes will light up with each one. So obviously, shields, engines, phasers, repair uh, sensors launchers, warp. Assign crew, you'll see that it comes up as green. You've got the three green at the top and you just distribute them as you do otherwise. It's just not as interactive as on the ages. Right, so those are your subsystems and repair crews. We've got the warp covered. 
Right. Now on this panel we've got the display view screen. Now that's kind of interesting because here you've got a regular view screen and the captain and everybody sees it there. So you can click it here and also have a view screen that appears above you. And I think it only happens when you're in regular view. So let's cancel that. Let's go back and let's try that again. There we go. There it is. So you've got your regular view and whatever happens on that screen will happen on this screen as transport. When we're locking on things, lock on target, energize, all the transport information will show up there, next target, previous target, etc. On the ages, you can't drop down to zero. You always have to have a pip added and you can't max out shields and engines together. <laughs> That's good for a hazardous environment. That way you can give all the juice to engines and shields at the same time. I like it. I didn't even realize you could do that. Well, now we know. So, I think that is a bit better of an economy of balance for engineering. So, for those of you who are technically minded, you should be able to remember where all of those things are. Right? So we've got... What have we got here? That's phasers, shields, and engines. Right? So top engines, shields, phasers, engines, shields, phasers. Easy. Put one into phasers. There we go. Right. Straightforward. And there are no other controls. So those, these are the only ones that you need to worry about, really. There we go. Oh, okay, so that enables and disables phasers. I kind of like that. Right, and then we've got transport controls over here with the main display above. Over here we had the warp core, which is changing the subsystems, isn't it? Yeah, and then applying or removing. So that's pretty straightforward. No other buttons there. Now this one was the trick. I don't know if I can remember this one. So you've got warp. Ah, that's right. That was get rid of warp. That was prepare warp, wasn't it? Warp coils charging. Warp coils charging. Warp coils off. Warp coils charging. So that's charging. And nothing else. Engage warp. Warp coils charged. Was there. Isn't it? Engage warp. Output accuracy has been upgraded. Prepare warp. Confirm. And then cancel warp. Nothing, yep. Take a look. So that's it. Pretty straightforward. Easily memorized. Let's go back to the captain's chair. There it is. Thank you for watching. And I'll try and edit this and make it a little bit more entertaining and cut out that bit in the middle. But for now, there's our honey. And I'll see you commanders out there. Take care.